as you get older, things change. There's definitely some correlation between getting older and becoming more insulin resistant. Now, it'd be easy to say this just simply has to do with the fact that your body has been bombarded with carbs and glucose for a lifetime. So you're just getting more resistant to it. In theory, that makes sense, and I'll explain why. Because in theory, yeah, essentially your body becomes insulin resistant because glucose sort of becomes like white noise, where the body just ends up seeing it so much that it starts kind of phasing out the insulin response to it. Or sometimes the body becomes so used to seeing insulin levels high all the time, it becomes resistant to it. So bottom line is that that theory makes sense, but there's a deeper underlying issue and that is probably something called mitochondrial dysfunction. And there's some very interesting data to back it up, but also some potential things that you can do to course correct. Because as we get older, this does seem to be really one of the key indicators of insulin resistance. So let's dive into this. After today's video, there is a special link down below to save 20% off Lakanto. Now, Lakanto has a bunch of different options, but what Lakanto is, is a monk fruit company. They have a really cool technology where they have erythritol grains that are spray coated in monk fruit. So a lot of times if you go to get monk fruit, you're gonna end up with some random sized grains of erythritol, then a random sized grain of monk fruit, and it's all mixed together and it's very just unbalanced, which makes it really, really difficult to get good flavor when you're baking. So that's where Lakanto really comes into play. But they also have liquid monk fruit, they have brownie mix, they have all kinds of really cool things. They even have low carb sugar-free cookies now that are all made with almond flour, made with Lakanto, made with the monk fruit. So if you're really trying to watch your carbohydrate intake, I definitely recommend you check them out. When it comes to baking, they are second to none. They are the best, hands down, and they are also really the first to market. They're really the thought leaders when it comes down to the whole monk fruit movement, at least here in the United States. So that link is down below. Again, you can save 20% off if you use that link and that code. It's a special discount just for people that watch my videos. So make sure you check them out and take advantage of some of their awesome stuff on their website down below after this video. So there's a study that was published in the journal Science, and it found that insulin resistance became more prevalent as we get older. Okay, but what else did it find? Well, it found in older people, okay, when they were insulin resistant, they had a 40% reduction in oxidative and phosphorylation capacity of their mitochondria. Now, what does that mean in a human term? So the mitochondria is where we process fuel, where we turn fuel into energy, okay? We have two real problems with insulin resistance. One, the cells don't necessarily use the glucose because the insulin isn't really working anymore, right? The other problem is if the glucose does get into the cell, the mitochondria needs to be able to handle it. So you see, we have two real problems here and a lot of times we only focus on the first one because the mitochondrial efficiency piece is a more difficult conversation to have. But if you ask me, it's one of the most important rate limiting things that we need to talk about. If you're unable to actually process the glucose, let's say insulin is the doorman that opens the door into the cell. Let's pretend for a second that the doorman opens the door to the factory just fine and the energy is going into the glucose is going into the factory no problem that's not the issue but the mitochondria the factory is having a hard time actually creating energy from that glucose you see how that's a kind of a secondary problem and it can really be something very 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 big right so this journal science study had determined that this whole mitochondrial dysfunction thing could be a key reason that insulin resistance develops in older people. Because we've seen with other data that mitochondrial dysfunction becomes more prevalent as we get older. We have years of oxidative stress. We have years of cellular damage. We have years of mitochondrial DNA damage that just comes with life and comes with stress and comes with managing and utilizing fuel. Okay? So what do we do about this? Well, there's a couple of things we need to pay attention to. What we want to focus on is developing more mitochondria, okay? But we also want to develop mitochondria that are efficient. So let me put it like this. Let's say you have a muscle, and in that muscle you have just hypothetically 10 mitochondria. Well, those 10 mitochondria, 
you're dependent on those 10 mitochondria to take the glucose and oxidize it and utilize it, go through oxidative phosphorylation and create energy. Okay, if five of those mitochondria go by the wayside, they become damaged, you're left with only five. So what we need to do is get more mitochondria. That way, if you have 100 mitochondria and you lose five, you're only losing 5% of your energy factories. So how do we go through mitochondrial biogenesis? Well, these are things that I've talked about in my videos before. I've talked about methods like fasting. Okay, fasting can indirectly increase what's called PGC1A. PGC1A is what is going to allow for more mitochondria to form. Okay, so things like that are very, very important. And simply put, just doing like a few days a week where you skip breakfast or a few days per week where you skip dinner or maybe one day a week where you do a 20 or 24 hour fast, which sounds so not even fathomable, but once you do it, it absolutely is. And the potential benefit you get from it is huge. Another thing that people don't always like to talk about because there's so much nonsense on the internet saying that resistance training is the only way and that cardio is not good and cardio you're gonna store fat and all this. It's nonsense because cardio and aerobic activity is what is going to actually create more mitochondrial density. If you've ever seen what is called a type one muscle fiber versus a type two muscle fiber, a type one muscle fiber, which is used mainly in endurance and aerobic work, is dark red when you look at a cross-sectional area of it. It's dark red because it has more capillary density, more blood flow, and consequently more mitochondrial density. This is a very good thing. So what you always want, I've talked about this before, especially over age 40, is a balance of increasing the amount of muscle you have, so you have literally more space for mitochondria, and then altering it, doing the best that you can by doing more things like cardio that increase it. Another thing that is not talked about enough and its importance for people that are over 40 is cold exposure. And I'm not talking every single day, making it a morning routine like a lot of people talk about. I know Andrew Huberman talks about that. It, it, yes, that's great for routine and for the brain, but metabolically, you just need it a couple times per week. Okay, and even taking a cold shower for 10 minutes or so, a long cold shower, can get you a similar effect. You just need to get yourself cold so you're activating what's called brown fat thermogenesis. You're activating uncoupling proteins. What this does is it increases the mitochondria in an effort to create more energy to create more heat. So your body says, we need more heat, let's create more mitochondria so we can create more heat. It becomes very, 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 very important. Now, some of the things I also wanna talk about Inflammation, as we get older, plays a tremendous role. There is something called damage-associated molecular patterns that I talk about frequently on this channel. As we get older, we have more mitochondrial DNA damage, we have more cellular DNA damage, and those damaged particles instigate an immune system response, okay? This immune system response elevates our inflammation, okay? Inflammation and immune system go hand in hand, right? So we get older, we have more damaged proteins, more damaged cells equals more inflammation, right? One of the things that we have seen in the research is how inflammation acts as sort of this static that makes it so that the cell cannot receive a signal from insulin as well. It's called the insulin receptor substrate one, and it's activated via what's called the J and K pathway, which is disrupted and activated ultimately by C-reactive protein, interleukin-6, and other inflammatory markers. Interestingly enough, there was a study published in experimental gerontology that demonstrated that simply resistance training could actually lower C-reactive protein. So just by nature of exercise itself, we could mitigate some of that inflammatory response that gets in the way of our bodies receiving a signal from insulin. It may sound negligible, but it's huge. So any other ways that you can modulate inflammation would be hugely beneficial. Turmeric is really widely known. Over 2,000 peer-reviewed studies have associated curcumin with a reduction in nuclear factor kappa B or other inflammatory signals or master regulators. This is huge, especially as we get older, right? Another thing that we need to pay attention to is adequate fiber intake. I think a lot of us forget that soluble fiber, things like chia, things like flax, play a tremendous role in our gut integrity, and our gut and its association with our immune system is extremely, extremely important. 
So if you do not have adequate amount of fiber and you do not have adequate amounts of gut flora or imbalanced gut flora, that is going to affect downstream what is called short chain fatty acid production, which directly has an impact on inflammatory signaling and just our immune system in general. So that's one way to sort of get our body in check to be able to manage that inflammation. So we look at all these pieces together and it's kind of like this metabolic circle of different things. Sure, how we eat, but more so about how we don't eat with implementing fasting. Periodic carbohydrate restriction, periodic resistance training, periodic aerobic training, periodic cold exposure and heat exposure, and then roping it all together with a balanced diet that has high amounts of protein and high amounts of fiber. So people just think, oh, it's all about reducing the carbohydrates. No, it's about increasing the ability for our factories to process energy first and then work backwards from there. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.